Amen. Let's pray for the word. And Father, I pray to bring the word now that you would speak through me. Remind me of what I prepared. Give us hearts, ears open to hear from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, today we begin our series um, around our May Mission Month, and we're going to talk about mission. Now, when we talk about mission, people go, oh, mission, man, they're going to talk about me sharing Jesus with people. Uh, and, and yeah, we are, because it is such an important piece that God asked us to do it. And, but it all started with him, yeah? It all started with God, and, and, and God came on mission to us. He came on mission to us. And because he went first, we, we are copy his example, and we go on mission because he first went on mission to us, we then share that, share that with others. It's a beautiful picture. So this, as I said, we're going to raise a whole heap of money. We're going to inform you about what we're doing, and we're going to challenge you to make a difference in people's lives. I remember when I was about um, 17 years of age, I uh, joined a kids' club as a, as a leader. It was down at a local church. It was on a Thursday afternoon between 4.30 and 7. And we had between 50, 60 kids, uh, primary school kids turn up. And I was one of the many leaders there. And uh, one of the games we used to play was a game called Stuck in the Mud. Has anyone played Stuck in the Mud before? Judy, you should, you'd love this game on your 80 something's birthday. It's a game where it's, it's like bull rush. You have one, kids up one end and to the other end, and, and they need to run from one end to the other, right? And then if you get tapped, rather than going out, you, you, you'd be stuck in the mud, and you'd have to open your legs up like this kid in this picture. And you'd have to stay there until somebody climbed through your legs. And as soon as they climbed through your legs, you could run again, right? And so it was a great game. And as a 17-year-old kid, you'd, uh, you'd get tapped and you'd, get, you'd stand still and the kids would get between your legs. And then um, you'd, you'd tap kids and kids would get stuck. And then you'd try and crawl between these little... It was so much fun. Game called Stuck in the Mud. Who's played Stuck in the Mud before? Yeah, good. And the uh, reason I share that story is because I reckon we all get stuck in certain areas of our lives. There's, there's, there's areas where we get stuck. We can get stuck around our height. We can get stuck around where we live. We can get stuck around the uh, job that we're in. We can get stuck around the income that we earn. And we feel like this sucks. I'm stuck here. I can't do anything about it. But then there's actually things that are much more serious. We can get stuck maybe around our weight. We can get stuck in life around a conflict in a relationship. Maybe a sickness, a disease. We can get stuck in an addiction, habitual sin, a financial debt that we can't get rid of. There's this stuff that we, where, we, where we can really get stuck. And, and if we look at our lives, I reckon we're all stuck in certain areas. Um, but for some of us, we are really stuck. There are areas of our lives where we go, you know what, I, I feel trapped here. I feel like it's never going to change. I feel like... I'm, I'm, I'm just here, I'm stuck, there's nothing I can do about it. And as we look at those things and, 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 and how bad they are, and they are bad for many of us, there's actually something that is much, much worse that the Bible talks about around us. The Bible talks about our stuckness is around being stuck, is around sin. The Bible says our biggest area of stuckness our biggest area of trouble in life is around sin, and the Greek word for sin is the word hamartia. That's the word we see in the New Testament. And it simply means to miss the mark. There's a scripture in John 3.23. It says, For all have sinned, all have missed the mark, and fallen short of the glory of God. God's standard is what he wants for us. And we've all fallen short of that. It's, it's language like a, it's like a bow and arrow with a target. You've got, you've got a target on a tree or an apple on someone's head, and you get the bow and arrow and you aim at the apple or aim at the target and you miss and you don't hit the bullseye. That's the language it's used in that God has given us the way to live, the standard of living, but we all fall short of it. We all, we, we all miss it. And when I say that, you might think, well, that's not such a big deal, but the consequences of sin is huge. In the beginning of Romans 6.23 says, for the wages, what we deserve for our sin is death. And that death is not just... I'm going to die. Well, there's three parts to death. There's firstly, my body is breaking down. The second part of death is that I'm going to die. Um, my, my, my body is breaking down. I'm going to die. It's the first part. second part of death is that my relationship with God is broken. Because of my sin, I can't be in relationship with God. The third part of the death is eternal death, that when I die and I'm judged because of my wrongdoing, the Bible says that the punishment for my sin is death, that I'm going to spend eternity separated from God forever. Death 
is the result of sin. Sin is super serious. It's much more serious than your stuckness right now. You may not feel that, but the Bible says this is very true and very, it's very clear in the Scriptures that our biggest problem is our sin. And if that was the end of the story, that would be a lot of bad news. But praise God, God is the God who came on mission. God didn't leave us in our sin. God did not leave us in with this death sentence over our life. God came to us on mission to, to rescue us. In Romans 5.8, it says this, For God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, while we were still missing the mark, while we were still getting it wrong, Christ died for us. You know, there was nothing we could do to get it right. There, was, we, there is no way for our good works to outdo our bad works. Because of our sin, we've all fallen short. We're all under this death sentence. There's no way out unless God does something. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing the pastor can do. There's nothing your peer can do to rescue you from the death sentence on your life. It's only God. And while you were still a sinner, Christ died for me. Christ died for you. He made a way for the relationship with God to be restored. He made a way for your sin to be forgiven, for the death sentence that, that is on your life to be paid for through Jesus' death. That, that our verse in Romans 6, as I read before, starts out with, for the wages of sin is death, but then it goes on. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's as we put our trust in Jesus through what he's done through his death and resurrection, God gives us a new life. God came on mission to us to rescue us. And that, and that message is available to everybody who wants it. God's love, God's mercy, God's compassion, God's forgiveness, this new life is available for every person. He says, God, I want that. I want that. Have you received that today? Those online, have you received what God has offered you today? Have you received it? Because you're still under the death sentence unless you receive what he's given you. And when you, and when you receive it, you're then forgiven of sin, your death sentence is paid for, and you have eternal life. That, that eternal life that it talks about here, the gift of eternal life starts now. You have life with God, a relationship with God that's restored, and it's a life that goes on forever. This message that God came, that, that our Jesus came, he spoke to the first disciples. And then he asked his first disciples to go and said, I have, Jesus says, I've now told you this message. I want you now to go and tell the next generation. And for that generation to tell the next generation. And for that generation to tell the next generation until we reach today, where God is calling us, his church, to tell this generation and for our generation to tell the next generation of the works of God and all that God has done for us. It's set out clearly in Matthew chapter 28. After the Jesus has risen from the dead, he's about to go to heaven and he speaks to his disciples and he says, then it says, Then Jesus came and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Not just decisions, not just people who stick a hand up at an event, not just someone who has some sort of emotional response to God and it's a one-off incident. No. It's people who make a decision for God. It might be an emotional thing in the moment, but it's a decision where they follow him all the days of their lives. Disciples, people who follow him all the days of their lives. We're there to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then teach them to obey. Baptize them and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. I've heard people say the Great Commission is not for us today because Jesus is speaking specifically to his disciples. But in verse 20, Jesus says to his disciples, And teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. What did Jesus just command his disciples to do? To go and make disciples, to baptize and teach. So therefore it is for that, that generation, the next generation for us today. God is calling us, his church, to follow his example and go on mission and get this message of Jesus, this message of life, and present it with the world. He's calling us, his church, to go. You know, the first time... 
We are see the word church in the New Testament is here in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. People ask the question of Jesus, who do you say I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus responds like this. He says, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock, the rock meaning um, you are the Christ, the son of the living God, I will build my church. Now, the word church wasn't a Jewish word. It was a Greek word. And Jesus, I reckon, deliberately used the word church as a Greek word because it had a meaning that the Jewish, um, the Jewish thing we didn't have a word for. The word church meant, it's the Greek word ecclesia, and it's a gathering of people, and not just a gathering of people to scratch backs or to make themselves feel better or a social club. They were a gathering of people who had a mission. You could use the word church in lots of different um, spheres of life at, at the time. Today, we use it for a group of people who gather together who are on mission. And what is our mission? To honor him, to love the world, to share the message of Jesus with the world. God is calling us as believers, not just to love each other and be a lovely social group and be inward looking and hide away from the world and and protect ourselves and make ourselves feel really good, which may seem nice. But God is calling the church The meaning of the word is a gathering of people who are on mission to go into the world and proclaim the message of Jesus. And if you're a believer this morning, that is you, that is me. We are all called, all called to be on mission. We can be on mission from a distance, and that is a good thing. It's good for us to pray for what God's doing around the world. It's good for us to give financially, and we want to raise $34,000 this month for 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 the mission work we're doing locally, globally, all around what we're doing in schools. That's good. But God wants us as individuals to be part of his story, individually reaching people for Jesus. I was driving back from the church um, a few weeks ago, um, our Padstow campus, and as I was driving home, I was a few streets from home, and there was this kid with a teddy bear on the government grass strip at the front. Like You have the footpath, then you have the grass, and you have the, the curb, right? And he's on the grass with a teddy boy. The kid's about three years, three and a half years old. And I drive past him and I go, where's the adult there? And I stop the car and there's no adult. I better do something. So I go across the street. The little boy, hi, mate. Um, what are you doing here? He's about three and a half years old. He's got his teddy bear and he says, mummy has gone to the shops. Okay. Um, so where do you live? Up there. Well, let's, let's go home. So um, I walk with him to his front yard. Who, who's, who's looking after you? And he says, Daddy is. Surprise, surprise, hey. Um, Daddy's looking after him. I said, where's Daddy now? Um, He's asleep. Okay. So how did you you get out of the house? And he points to the back. All right. So before we do that, we are knocked on the front door. And there's there's no answer. Knock on the door. Hello, hello. No answer. And then I said to the kid, so how did you come out here? And he points from the back. I said, I want you to go around the back and go wake up Dad. So this little three-year-old kid went went around the back. And after about three or four minutes, I'm in the front yard waiting Dad opens the door, and he goes, I said, I just found your kid on the street. Oh, thank you so very, very much. And he was very pleased, and that was it. That was the end of the story. The reason I share that story is because I saw someone who was in danger, that little kid, and he needed a bit of help, yeah? The kid was in danger, and I, and, and, I, and, and, and I did something about it. I got involved, something very simple, took the kid home, knocked on the door. How much more? How much more... As, as, as we believers have got the message of forgiveness for sin, the message of death defeated, the message of relationship with God restored, the message of eternal life, how much more, how much more do we have the most incredible gift? People are in danger. They are in danger and they need to be told this message so that they can be rescued and God is calling us to be a part of it. So really practically today, how do you play your part? And I've left something in my bag. I'm just going to go get it. How do we play? How do we play our part? I want to give you, um, if I can find it. You know when those kids have bags and they bring all those notes home from school and they turn into a compost heap, you know? My bag's a bit like that sometimes. It's full of uh, papers. How do you play your part? The first thing I want to talk to you about is foundations. This year we've uh, cast the vision that 
Every person who calls life get home, every adult would take someone through foundations. Currently, there are 10 adults taking someone through foundations, which is awesome. We've got another few hundred adults as part of LifeGate Church. We have 10. 10 people are taking someone through foundations, and that is an awesome thing. Foundations is for people who are new to faith or people who have not yet made that decision. It's 11 sessions where you get to sit down with someone and you disciple them. You introduce them to the Christian faith. You give them an opportunity to respond to Jesus. You teach them the basics about the Christian journey. And if you want to be on mission... This is an excellent tool that you can use to get one-on-one with people, get up close and personal, and take them through the message of Jesus. That's the first thing I want to challenge you on. The second thing I want to challenge you about is invite. You know, sometimes we are struggle with the words. Um, I want to present the message of Jesus, but at the time the words just don't come out or I miss opportunities and... And my wife talks about that. She talks about how, Nathan, you just know what to say all the time, but I get stuck, I don't know what to say. And, and you might feel that way. You know, if that's how you feel, one of the things you can do is invite. Invite them to a place where they can hear the gospel, where, they can, where someone else can talk about it. We want to create a Sunday church service online and in person where you can invite people who don't yet know Jesus, where they can come and they can hear the message clearly, where it's explained in simple language. And they can meet Christians and have an incredible experience of God and his church. Why don't you invite someone to our online service? Invite someone to our, um, to our Sunday services. Maybe you can invite someone to your life group or to when your group of friends hang, are hanging out together, to a party where there's other believers. Invite them to a place where they can hear the message of Jesus, meet other Christians. The third thing, I want to encourage you to make a difference. You are, saw the story today of Catherine Lynch, and for the last 11 years, on a Saturday, she's been going to nursing homes and sits with people for a couple of hours and just talks with them. I mean, how beautiful is that? How much Jesus is that? We want to encourage you to make a difference, something you can do in your own personal life, or you can get involved in the life of LifeGate Church. Jackie just spoke about our LifeGate care. Jackie's speaking at our Preston's campus today. You can get involved in life, get care on a Wednesday night. You can cut up carrots. You can sit with people and have conversations. You can pray. You can share your story with people. It's a great opportunity. We have kids programs. We've got youth programs. We have our mum's program called Play Date that happens out at a park in Preston's. There's so many opportunities where you can get involved in life, get church, where you can make a difference in people's lives. And by you getting involved and making a difference, you're playing your part, a part of your part, in in doing the thing that God wants you to do. Um, We have a rise, which is for our youth. We have our youth program. We have our young adults. The young adults went away last weekend, apparently, and had an incredible time. Get involved with our young adults. Mentor our young men. Mentor our young women. There's so many opportunities for you to get involved. Um, You can get involved in SRE teaching. Special religious education. SRE is something that's um, dear in my heart. Um, Kath, who's our kids' pastor, runs SRE. She teaches, um, Jess teaches scripture. As a church, we support the SRE teacher in East Hills Girls High School. You'll see a video of that in a few weeks. Um, Gabby, her name is, and we put money specifically for her wage to present the gospel in that school. You know, SRE is a huge thing. In New South Wales, we still have the privilege of going into schools and presenting the message of Jesus. And when I was eight, I was in a scripture class at Padstow Park Public School, sitting in the now kindergarten playroom, um, and that's when I committed my life to Jesus. There was a teacher, um, brown hair, ponytail, that's all I remember. I've tried to find out who she is. I've asked her records. No one knows if, you, if you're watching this, thank, praise God for you. I remember she taught the scripture class and then she said, if you want to commit your life to Jesus, stay at recess. So I did. At recess, I stayed and I prayed that prayer in a scripture class. Scripture is an incredible opportunity. And, that, and if you have those gifts, talk to Kath, our kids pastor, about getting involved, making a difference. When the borders open up, you can go to visit our Transform Cambodia Center 33. You can go and visit that. Um, Jackie's taken teams with Entheos over to India. You can be part of that. There's so many things that you can be a part of to, take, to, to make a difference in people's lives. You can make a difference. And the final thing, the fourth thing, is for you to give financially. 
This month, we want to raise $34,000. And my encouragement is for you to be prayerful and say, God, what do you want me to do? And if everyone does our bit, we're going to raise this money and more. Last year, we aimed for 29 and we raised 35, I think it was, because everyone did their bit. My encouragement, seek God, find out what he wants you to do and give. If you want to give in that letterbox at the back, put it in an envelope, write May Mission Month. If you want to give it specifically to a mission, write the, the mission you want to give it to, stick it in that envelope or give, give online, give through the Tively app, use the website, it's all there for you. As we come to, this end, as we come to the end of this message, as you, as you think about how you play your part, you know, you, you might look at one of these things and say, Nathan's talked about foundations for ages. I mean, I really got to do, with it, do that with that person and that might be a reminder. Maybe you, you think, yeah, I need to invite or I need to get more involved in making a difference or I'm going to play my part financially. You might have those thoughts. But I wonder this. I wonder how many times you've heard a message like this in church. Now, if you've been in church for a while, I want to talk to you. If you're new to church, this is all fresh for you and it's new for you. But if you've been in church for a while, I haven't, so I haven't told you anything new today. I, I presented to you the, the, the gospel that our biggest problem is sin. God came to rescue us. Now he's given us the responsibility of presenting that message to the world. God still rescues them, but he wants us to present the message. I didn't teach you anything new today. I use really popular, common verses, Romans 3, Romans 6, Matthew 28, these really common verses. And I did that intentionally because these are the foundational pieces. But but, But my challenge for you is this. If you've been in church for a while, how many times have you heard a message like this? It might be 10, it might be 20, it might be 30. And when you hear a message like this, it can be like, here it is again, ho-hum. I've heard this before. Yeah, I know I need to be doing that, but is anything really going to change? My hope that this message will stir you. There's, there's been a number of moments in my life where I've been so impacted by the gospel that it's, that it's, that it's motivated me to, me to action. Once I was in my early 20s, I was um, just impacted by God. God was doing incredible work in my life. And I was supposed to go to an engagement party, but, but a guy was sharing his faith in a, in a, in a, in a, at the market stall in Panania. So I said no to the engagement party to go and present the gospel. Now, was that a good decision? Maybe not. But I was just so excited and passionate about Jesus, I wanted to share my faith in Panania. And I did that. And then I remember being... Um, a young kid, maybe 19 years of age, and I was part of a rock band. Do you know I was part of a rock band called Mad Hatter? We had all these cool hats. I was a lead singer. Jess, you would have loved it. We had this song called 1994, and it was all about 1994. That's how old that was, right? Um, yeah, that's what it was called, 1994. Far out. That's a long time ago, isn't it? Anyway, we were a Christian band, and we, and we sat with the pastor, and, and in that night, the pastor explained to us about the seriousness of the gospel, that people are in danger, and without the gospel, that people are, are, are dying and dead and will continue to die for eternity. And, and God did something in my heart, this, this I'm moved by his spirit in my heart, this, this passion desire. I went, I have to do something about this. So the, so the next day or the Saturday, I packed up my backpack with a bunch of Bibles and walked through Pasadena Shopping Center and just looked for opportunities to talk to people. And I talked to a number of people about, I don't, I don't, I don't remember what I said, um, a, a question I use now, which I think is really helpful, is tell me about your faith journey. It's very vague, it's very new agey, but it, it means something to people. Tell us about your faith journey. And it's very open to be... Anyway, it works for me. That's a good one. I don't know what I said 20 years ago back at that time. I talked to a number of people. One guy I had an in-depth relationship with, and I've spoken to him a few times over the years. But the reason I did that... Now, was it effective? No. Nah. Um, did I see people come to Jesus? No. Did it plant seeds? Maybe. Yes. But did it do something for me? Yes. Did I step out for Jesus? Yes. And there's been moments in my life where the Spirit of God has so impacted me that I go, you know what, I've got, got to share this. And I think we go through stages and it's like a wave where we get super excited for a season and that excitement dies off. And maybe after young adults camp, you're super excited for a while and then it dies off. And then you hear a message or something or you're reading the Bible for yourself and something stirs you and you get really excited again and then it dies off. And I think, that, I think that's okay. Like ideally you want to be always excited, but I think it's normal for us to do the waves. But my hope is today... 
Today, this message is, 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 is one of those turning points for you. It's a, wow, people are in all sorts of trouble without Jesus. I, I need to present this message to them. And the God would put a passion in your heart, in your life, in your mind, a, that, that, that he would so fill you with his Holy Spirit that this sharing Jesus thing would be natural, would be normal, that you would be excited and passionate about it. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask Matt to put some music on. And I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit would stir in us. Those watching online, this is for you too. That the Holy Spirit would stir in us. Like on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit came and they were baptized in the Spirit, and Jesus said, that is power for you to witness, Acts 1, 4 to 8. Power for you to witness that God would fill us with his Spirit and he empower us to be his witnesses. So we're going to ask you to stand, if that's okay. Press play, Matt, if that's okay. I'm going to invite you to stand. And I encourage you, if you want to, just to put your hands out to God, lift them up high, whatever, or just put them out like this and say, God, I want to receive from you today. And I'm going to say, come Holy Spirit. 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 Jesus, you said that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Spirit was that we would be your witnesses. That your Spirit would come upon us so that we would witness. We've heard the gospel message today. We've heard it clearly. Father, we ask now that you come by your Spirit upon us. Come in power. Move. Give us a passion for your name, God. Give us an understanding of the gospel that it is the message of life when people are on their way to death. God, that you would put a passion in us for people. We would put a love for people in us that we would love people enough that we would be deliberate to go on mission. That we would share with those around us, in our workplaces, in our community groups, in our streets, in our families, the message of Jesus that will be deliberate to invite, that will ask them if they want to do foundations with us. Lord, that we will be deliberate in our giving to give to May Mission Month so the gospel may be spread in schools and in Transform Cambodia, and through LifeGate Care, and in the Philippines, and every area that we, that we cover, God, we pray that your money will be used for your purpose. But God, we pray that you would fill us now by your Holy Spirit, and that you would give us power to be your witnesses. Come Holy Spirit, we pray. Come Holy Spirit. Let's just wait on him. Come Holy Spirit. We're going to continue to pray for people. For those watching online, I encourage you to think about this reflection question that's going to come up. We're going to release you now. Say goodbye to you guys online. Well, hey, thanks so much for checking out this message. LifeGate Online has people meeting in homes and online in many different locations, and we'd love to help you get connected. My name is Andrew Lingley, and I lead our online campus team, and it's our job to help you do exactly that to help you get connected, to get support and prayer and to find out how you can take your next step. So if you'd like to do that, why don't you head to lifegate.org.au slash online and we're looking forward to getting to know you.